Good morning and welcome to the classic. Somebody's shushing out there, I love it. Well, this morning we're gonna be finishing up our Olympic series and Pastor Brian's gonna be preaching on passing the torch. And when we have to pass the torch, sometimes we're a little reluctant to do that because you know, we're not sure if that person's gonna handle it okay and you know, are they up for it? And it reminded me of taking my son Adam to college. Last year was his freshman year and, and we loaded up all the stuff. You know, I made sure I helped him pack, you know, make here's your cold medicine, you know, here's your laundry detergent, do you have enough quarters? You know, we took him to school and we took all his stuff to his room and I started unpacking things. I really think this should go here and this should go here and don't forget this. And um, this year we took him for his sophomore year at Ball State. Now, I went to Ball State. Both of his grandparents, gr grandmothers went to Ball State, so we're happy that he's following in our footsteps. But we took him to school this year and we took all his stuff up to his room in one fell swoop. And uh, I said, you need to get your clothes out of those suitcases. I need to take those back with me. <laughs> Just throw them anywhere. Okay. All right, that's good enough. Let's go eat lunch. And that was it. You know, it, He'd proven himself. I knew he was going to be fine, and so it was easier for me to, to pass the torch. Have, have you ever had an experience like that? Please join me in this morning's liturgy. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. God delights, God's delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. The Lord takes pleasure in those who Please stand for our opening hymn.
Well, welcome once again to Monticello United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're with us here this morning. And uh, we'd like to welcome also those listening on Sunny 1077 FM and those who will be joining us on our delayed broadcast on Comcast Channel 90 on Tuesday and Thursday evening. Anger. How many of you guys ever get angry or mad at someone? Nobody out there does. Maybe it's because they're older and they know better. Do you think? Do you think? Well, today I want to talk about anger and what happens when we hold it inside of us, okay? So we're going to talk about anger and things that might make us angry, and then we're going to put in something in the bowl that that anger represents. So all of us might have, all of you have a brother or sister? Okay. What if the brother and the sister plays with the toy? Okay. So that might make you mad, especially if you told them not to. What if the brother or sister broke that toy? That might really make you mad. What if you had plans for the night and your teacher gave you homework? What if your mom or your dad made you clean your room and you didn't want to? What if you wanted to go play with a friend and you couldn't? What if you really didn't want to come to church today, but you had to? Okay, now, if we hold on to that anger and we stir it all up and it stays inside of us, does that look good or does that look bad? Anybody want to eat it? I don't either. That's what happens when we hold anger inside of us and we don't let it go and we don't forgive people. It gets nasty, it gets bad, and sometimes it even shows on the outside if we don't let that anger go. God tells us and Jesus tells us to forgive people, don't hold on to anger because it makes us very nasty inside and then it can show on the outside. So when somebody makes you mad or does something that makes you angry, forgive them and let it go. Don't hang on to it forever and ever. Just let it go. Let us bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear God, help us to be the way that you want us to be and not hold on to our anger. Help us to let it go, to forgive and forget, and to move on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up this morning. You may now go to Adventures in Faith. Would you join me in our affirmation of faith this morning? We believe in God who creates us. We follow Christ who showed us how. He received and shared God's grace. He trusted God in everything. He let go of things so that he might cling to life. He let go of life so that he might hold on. Which alone gives us life. 
and the new oneness of all life, the gift of forgiveness, the reality of resurrection, and the mystery of eternal life. By the power of that Holy Spirit, and in the name of Christ, we devote ourselves to the generous At this time, we're going to invite uh, Sherry Quarles to come and share a celebration with us. Good morning. I'm Sherry Quarles, as he said, and I'm the director of the Garden Child Care Ministry here at the Monticello United Methodist Church. August 31st will be uh, our one-year anniversary of opening up, and we would like to thank this congregation for the generous donations we received to help get this ministry off the ground and running. We opened our doors on August 31st. We needed 17 students enrolled to break even, and we opened with 18. We quickly grew, and as we come upon the end of our first year, we have cared for a total of 45 different children throughout the year, with 32 being the maximum at one time. Currently, we have 28 children in our care and have two new starting tomorrow, and we have three babies, two of which aren't born yet, pre-enrolled in our seedlings room. We are so pleased to say that we've been able to be totally self-supporting in meeting our day-to-day -day functions of the center. It has been an invigorating, exciting, and at times exhausting first year. I truly believe the success of this program has totally been led by God and inspired by the many prayers from this congregation. I wish to thank Pastor Brian for his invaluable guidance, the advisory board who has given of their time and energy, and those people are Marsha Brooks, Brock Hazelby, Chelsea Kilmer, Nikki Zarzi, Rachel Mann, and Jessica Rule, and Mindy Gutwein. I most especially want to thank my staff. The following people have been with us from day one and have gone above and beyond to make this program a success during this first year. And those people are Heather Abbott, who was unable to be with us this morning. Her name, she does the Sprout Room, which are toddlers. Darcy Miller and Bev McCool are here. Wave, where's Bev? Bev's being bashful back there. Beth Whitney, uh, she's no, not here either, and she does the sunbeams, which are three, four, and fives. And Tammy Pattengale, who is what we call a floater. She kind of goes to all age levels. I'd also like to thank Rochelle DeAndre and Georgina Velasquez. They mostly work preschool, but have filled in in the daycare from time to time. Again, we want to thank you so much and keep praying that the Lord will continue to guide and bless this ministry. Well, thank you, Sherry, for all your work in, in getting the, the daycare off the, off the ground. And it really is an exciting ministry of, of, the, of the congregation, and we want to continue to keep it in our prayers. That's so exciting. It's definitely a praise. Wow, what a week it's been. Sometimes I come on Sunday and, and I think back about what's gone on since the last time I was here, and it's been kind of a crazy week. Last week, we were praying for those in Louisiana, and uh, we had an uh, UMCOR offering for that. This week, it's for Indiana. Um, we have uh, South Bend has a lot of flooding, and of course, Kokomo hit by the tornado. So if you want to give to UMCOR, which will go to Indiana, disaster relief this week. Just uh, go ahead and fill that out for UMCOR. If you don't want it to go to Indiana, you want it to go to Louisiana, just designate that. Um, if we get requests for helping with disaster relief, um, if they ask us to send workers, and you'd be interested in being one of those workers, um, please just contact Pastor Brian and let him know that you would be willing to, to help with the work. But right now, what they need most is some money. Also, we have some teacher cards left. We passed out teacher cards last week for teachers and staff. Um, 
to be praying for them. And so if you would like to um, pray for a teacher and you didn't pick one up last week, or if you'd like an extra one, we have some left at the Welcome Center. And I want to encourage you to take home the uh, prayer window that's in your bulletin so that you can continue to pray for those in that, in that uh, prayer window this week. Let's be a praying church and lift each other up. Will you join me in uh, our call to prayer song? God of all that is, creator God, the God who heals and restores and redeems us, we come before you this morning to worship you, to put you first in our lives because you alone are worthy of our praise. We come before you this morning and confess that we have not always done what you want us to do. We have done things that we shouldn't have done, and we have left things undone that we should have done, and we confess those things to you now. Help us to choose the right way to go. We give you thanks for all that you've done and are doing in our church, in our own lives, in our community, in our world. We give you thanks for the garden, child care. We give you thanks for the dinosaur cage that we're building, that big green thing that represents so much work that we can do to bring people closer to you. We give you thanks for that. Thank you for doing all that you've done for us and continue to do. We pray for those who have experienced loss this week, loss of someone they care about, loss of property, loss of livelihood. I lift that up to you, God. You know, you already know, and I just want to lift it up because I want you to know that I know, that we know that people are struggling and people are grieving, and we keep those people in our hearts. Please help. Please help those that have been affected by this weather, the tornado, the rain, the flooding. 
please send your people to help in whatever way you move us to provide that help. I pray for all those in school, teachers, staff, and students, those who are on their way or already in college. Lord, may they seek you to make their choices and their decisions. I pray that you will guide each one of us. Send us from this place ready to do your will. And in all this, I ask in the name of Jesus, who taught his people to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire ignites a candle and makes his home carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the hopeless confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way see now your sister she's been robbed and lied to still holds a candle without a flame carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the lone the tired and worn hold out your candle for all to see it take your candle and go light your world take your candle and go light your world are a family whose hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in darkest times Carry to the 